Viewer discretion is advised. Boom, perfect timing. Kevin and CISO and his pregnant wife, Sabrina, were en route to the emergency room at Jackson West Medical Center in Doral when they found their path blocked by two Miami-Dade police officers. Surveillance footage from the hospital shows Mr. and CISO pulling up behind a squad car at a stop sign just as another officer is turning left. The officers initiate a conversation in the middle of the road, obstructing access to the emergency room. Mr. Nciso would patiently wait for over 20 seconds before honking to signal the officers to move. While one officer complies and drives away, the other officer, Officer Alaziz Daniels, exited his vehicle effectively turning the situation into a traffic stop. In the body cam video, Mr. Nciso can be heard explaining to Officer Daniels, quote, I honked at you because you're blocking the way with your car, talking to the other. When asked for his license, Mr. Nciso refused and requested to speak with Officer Daniels' supervisor. Officer Daniels would disregard Mr. Nciso's request and instead forcibly extracted Mr. Nciso from the vehicle. Mr. Nciso urgently explained, quote, I have an emergency and that's why I'm at the emergency room for my wife. He shared that his wife had been involved in an accident the previous day and needed immediate medical attention to ensure the well-being of their unborn child. Surprisingly, despite being mere steps away from the emergency room entrance, Officer Daniels calls for fire rescue, resulting in a significant and regrettable delay of the crucial medical attention that was so desperately needed. In December of 2022, I had the privilege of conducting an interview with Kevin and Sabrina and CISO, where they recounted their distressing encounter with law enforcement. The following account presents their first-hand perspectives and reflections on the incident. Hi, uh, I'm Kevin Nciso, the husband in the video. Uh, I'm an IT specialist by trade. Now, my name's Sabrina Nciso, the pregnant wife in the video. Um, I work in finance, financial analyst. So. If you guys could please tell me um, on this day, the date, the time, what, what was going on on this day? Where were you guys headed to? Where were you guys coming from? Yeah, we were uh, leaving work on that day and heading to the emergency room uh, because the day prior, my wife was in a car accident and we wanted to get checked up. You know, we were concerned about the baby, concerned about her. She was starting having some back pains. So we started heading to the emergency room right after work. And when we got there, that's when we saw an officer parked at the stop sign that we pulled up to. That's the only entrance into the, or the only way to go into the emergency room was, was by taking the left that stop sign that you might see in the video. So when we got there, another officer pulled up pretty much opposite of the officer in the other lane that there is only two lanes to be in. And they opened their window and they started chatting, I guess. And um, that's when I, we, you know, we, we stayed there for a little bit, waited, and then we honked to let them know with, that we need to pass by while uh, one of the officers put his hand up like to wait. So we waited a little bit longer. After some time, we honked again. That's when the first officer came to our window. He asked what's going on. And we told him, you know, my wife was in a car accident the day prior. We need to go to the emergency room. She needs to be checked out. Our doctor advised us to, you know, make sure everything was good. He said, okay, you know, pass by. So I went to go around the officer that was in front of me, which was Officer Daniels at the moment. And when I was going around Officer Daniels, that's when he came out the car and I lowered my window on my passenger side and my wife sat and I let him know, you know, he's like, what's going on? Same thing. So I told him my wife was in a car accident and she needs to be checked out. She's pregnant. You know, our doctor advised us to come get checked out, make sure everything was okay. And that's when he immediately started demanding my, my ID and my license. And the first thing I thought of was, why do I need to provide my license? We're just here to get checked out. Let us pass. And he kept on, um, you know, asking for my license. He just 
then he went back to his car and got his radio and came back to the window and went to my side of the car. And I opened my window and I said, I, I, I want to speak for supervisor. You know, this is, this is not something normal. Why would I provide you my license if I haven't committed a crime for any reason? You know, we're just trying to get through you guys. And the far, first officer was like, yeah, you know, go on through. And the second officer, Officer Daniel, was the one that had the problem, we guess. And that's when he opened my car door, reached in, unbuckled me. You know, I had my hands up because I was afraid. And that's when he pulled me out the car. And he went in the car, turned off the the car and took the keys. Or he might have left the keys in there. Mind you, it's also, I don't know, it was July, August. In Miami, Florida, the weather is you're going to get almost 100 degrees outside. So mind you, our windows are open. It's 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And then the car's off at this point for no reason in reality. So it was just like, it was a lot of buildup even up to that moment. Like, it was not great. I honked at you. you because you're blocking the way with let, your let car. Me, let me have your license. Other. Let me have your no. license. Let me have no. your license. I'll put it back in my pocket. Your ego's really this big. I honked at you very nicely one time for you to move out the way. He wants to continue. I have an emergency. That's why I'm at the emergency okay, room for my uh, okay, wife. Okay, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna. If you, you Ask, need, if you need emergency help, that's one thing. I already told you. That. Okay. That's the first thing I told you when I opened no, this no, no, window. No, 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 no. First, first of all. The first thing I told you. For, no, first, of all, first, first of all. all you turn your car, first of all. Turn your car off. 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 Get out the car. Get out the car. Get out the car. Stand over there. Delta 2105. Oh, so you're okay now? I had an accident. Okay, are you okay? Are you okay? You want to Are you okay? Okay, well, have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. You say you need fire rescue? Have a seat. 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 Okay, you start uh, fire rescue this way. Uh, young lady says she's been involved in an accident. Uh, she's Just alert. You can start in routine for now. Babe, keep the phone You're at 2301 North 179 Avenue at JMH West. Let's kill yourself. She's uh, in the parking lot here. I immediately grabbed my phone and I started recording once he started demanding my license just because it doesn't seem like your normal cop to demand your license and pull you out the car. You know, at that point I was, I needed some proof because if it escalated or I needed some type of witness that wasn't subjective to show, you know, to, for someone to believe my side and, you know, see what was going on because I don't think, I, it just didn't seem normal to me. And you know, I immediately wanted to start recording for my safety and you know, for our safety. I think I froze up in, in that moment because you're not expecting, because it's like first he said, you know, turn off the car and, and all this stuff. And you couldn't give us, he couldn't give us a reason. And then all of a sudden the car door's flying open. He's bun bumping the seatbelt and he's turning off the car. My heart's racing at this point because I'm like, you know, you, you've seen stuff online and seen these, you know, crazy videos where things escalate for no reason sometimes. And now it's like, it's actually really happening. Like I stunned and scared is the, the only thing that can come to mind. Cause we're not, we're not like aggressive people. We're not, you know, we don't get in trouble. We kind of mind our business and do what we have to do. And to kind of experience that like firsthand was, it, it, it was frightening. Especially on the way to get help, you know, we're, we're there at the emergency room doors just waiting to turn left to park. And you don't expect when you're looking for help for, for someone to come and mistreat you or question your motives or, you know, even question why you're at the emergency room. Because he started asking questions about, you know, my wife, like, oh, why, why'd you come today? And, and, you know, was it really an emergency? And, you know, all this, all these questions. And, you know, at, at one point I asked him, you know, are you, are you a doctor to, uh, to, to, you know, assume that my wife is not okay or that the babies aren't, you know, okay. So it, it was, it was shocking. It didn't seem right what was going on. It didn't seem normal. Yeah. And we had just found out at that point, we were only about five weeks pregnant. So it was very new. We did lose a pregnancy last year. So in our mind, we're just making sure we're doing everything okay, which is the reason why we went to the emergency room the following day after the accident. So it's like all that's happening and then you would think someone here, oh, you're, okay, well, it, it maybe it would have been handled differently, but there was no, no regard, none. Uh, he just starts questioning me again, you know, for my, for my license. I felt like he was physically pushing me to the front of the car 
and you know asking me for my for my information and what's going on and that's when my wife steps out the car to keep recording and when she steps out the, the car that's when he focuses you know his attention on her yeah he was just like oh you need to get back in and i'm like these have escalated where my husband is now outside the car so i'm gonna try and keep recording as much as possible but at that point i'm already like I guess panicking where I could feel like my heart is in my throat and everything is getting super intense. And I'm like, in my mind, I was like, no, I'm not the confrontational person. Like I'm not in that way. Let me just sit and just try and record what I can from where I am. Cause you can still see, but it was like, I, my intention was to try and keep recording. And then the phone kept overheating. So it was really, they were put in a situation where you want to just keep going and you can't. So it was just, yeah. And then mm-hmm. at that point he started demanding her get back in the car the car is off at this point 90 degrees outside maybe 100 degrees inside with no ac the car's turned off and telling her get back in the car get back in the car at this point she you know she says why do i have to get back in the car you know i i'm just recording and he starts saying oh but i thought you needed med- medical emergency medical assistance pretty much downplaying what she's doing it even shows in the video it was just like oh but 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 you had an accident yesterday you have a big emergency and instantly he just wouldn't stop it that was like no 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 but you're not okay and that's why you're here and it was, it was he was just going on and on and he would not give that up until i don't even know when because he kept going with that. that was something he was writing on it well that and that's when i said just sit in sit in the car because at that point i don't i don't mind when the focus on me because i can i can take it but my pregnant wife was expecting I didn't want her to be the focus of attention when he started questioning and, 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 you know, just antagonizing her. So that's when she gets back in the car and he calls fire rescue while we're you know, a minute away from the, the emergency room doors. Let me have your license, sir. What, intra- what infraction? Let me have your license. No, Let I me refuse. have your license. I refuse. Okay, we'll deal with you in the moment. That's fine. Okay. Ask for your supervisor, please. Just outside fire on the three. 1707. Genesis. May I please have your name and the badge number? I'm pretty sure it's your department policy to get provided a, fa- a fax. What is your badge number, officer? I'm Officer Daniels. Officer Daniels? My name is Officer Daniels. Okay. My ID is 5541. 5541 All for right. the camera. Make sure it's still recording, babe. And let me have your driving license, sir. No. I asked you several times, let me have you your driving license. You can ask all you want. That's not a command. All right. What, what is your, what, what, what is her, what is her, uh, her ailment? What, what is she? It was she, in a car what, accident. What, what's the, what, okay. She just want to be seen by her, doc, by her okay. doctor okay. at emergency room to make sure the baby is okay. Okay. When, when did, when, when did she, ha- when was she involved in an accident? When? Yesterday, you were involved in an accident yesterday? Okay, and, uh, and you called fire, call fire rescue and they treated you yesterday? Or they, or you, you... Okay. Okay, and uh, yesterday, did you did they take you to the hospital yesterday? No. You didn't go to the hospital yesterday? Okay, after you said you had... Yesterday, yesterday, after you say you was involved in a, in a, in a very bad accident, yesterday. I never said I was in a bad accident. You, okay, so you wasn't, were you involved in a, in a car accident, yes or no? I was involved in a car accident. Yesterday? Yes, you can see the damage on the car. You, you was, I'm, I'm, okay, okay. So you was involved in an accident yesterday at what time? 4.30 p.m. You have the police report you say you wanted to show me? Yes, we can have we Okay, have let me see the police report. It's from yesterday. All right. All right. I can't wait. Okay. All right. Okay. We're going to have fire rescue come and treat you right now. The, the look at you and check your vitals and everything from the accident that you had yesterday. Sir, don't you, don't, 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 don't threaten me. Don't, don't, don't threaten me. Okay. Me. Do not threaten me. me. Do not You're threaten me. Right away. Nobody's, thro- nobody's, nobody's blocking. Room. You yes, don't, you are, first, first of all, right right listen, are you going no, to let me speak? Are you going to let me speak? Okay. listen to me. All right. That's it. Okay. You move out the way when I have an emergency. That's it. There is right. no, you know, oh, we were talking about what we're eating for dinner. Nothing else. I told you there's an emergency. 
Okay, and I actually have an emergency, an actual emergency right now. Is there a missing person here? Definitely not the priority over an emergency for my yeah. wife well, and her well, unborn well, baby. That's why we're calling the fire officer. Yeah, even though right there is an emergency room, right? That's smart. What's your badge number, Nino? 4268. You say this emergency, we're calling fire rescue for you to, to so we can check on your door on your on your wife or your girlfriend. Okay. Do you have your ID with you, ma'am? Let me see your ID. My license or my Jackson license? Yeah, yeah, your, your driver licenses, that'd be that'd be fine. Babe, stop the recording and start it again, please. You say you work for Jackson Hospital? Which hospital do you work for? I work for all of them. You work Jackson for all Maine. of the Jackson? You at, which is what Jackson, Maine? That's the one you work for? Okay, what, do, what is your title with Jackson Hospital? Okay. okay. All right. You say you had credentials, your Jackson credentials? Absolutely. Okay. And this makes, okay, thank you. I work for the same hospital that we were at. You know, I work in the, in the downtown location, but essentially I work for all of them. So it's like, I'm showing you that I work here. I figured maybe it was like, not like that to scare him off, but just more of like a, you know, this is a little unprofessional on your side. And that's what I figured that that would be like. And no, he held my badge and everything. And it was just like, I gave it to him because like he said, I'm not confrontational. And it was like all this attention was directed toward me demanding my license and everything. And I'm like, you know, it was just more of just so that he could leave me alone and get away. Because I was not in the condition to like go back and forth with him at all. You still won't show me your driving license, sir? I'll let, if you tell okay. me a, a law I broke. All right. Is there an infraction? Okay. Make it sure. Yeah, my six. You can start the video again, baby, if you want. Okay. Change my signal and it's not already 27. Called your sergeant? We're gonna deal with this emergency at this moment. We'll get you a supervisor. We'll get you a supervisor over here. We'll get you a supervisor. We will get you a supervisor, sir. This is emergency mode right here. This is yeah, you, this we're gonna deal right with there. this. No, we're gonna deal with this emergency right here. You would take we, her over there. We're gonna we're gonna we, she's alert. She's alert. She's alert, sir. She's alert and she's breathing. We care about everybody. We care about you everybody. We care about everybody. We, you, want, kill, you, want, right? you want to Except confront me? Kill? You want to... Except for the people you kill? What, what, why are you saying that? For should what? I look, should I, uh, you, you're trying to antagonize me? There's no need to antagonize me. There's no need to antagonize me. There's no need to antagonize me, sir. Don't need to antagonize me. I'm here. You want You want me to help you? We're going to help you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. We're going to wait for fire rescue to come. You're literally impinging my fucking freedom of right to travel. Okay. You said yeah. You said you said that she's not feeling good. She's uh, she was involved in an accident yesterday. You're you need fire her, rescue. You're stopping her. From we got fire her. rescue coming. To, I'm, I'm checking. I'm looking her. at her. I'm looking at her. You're she's doctor. alert. Okay. She's alert. You're and she got doctor? the vitals. Oh, don't worry. Our alert's gonna have a field day. Yeah. You just having an ups, upset, bad day today. That you want to take it out on us? Don't do that. You don't do that. We have an emergency. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Don't put your ego in this. Don't do that. Don't, don't do put that. Your ego in you this. trying to antagonize me? It's not going to work, sir. I told you to get out the way. And I asked you for, and I asked you, and we were, we were going to get out what? your way. Why would I give you and my then, license? Listen, listen, because listen. Your ego. Listen, we your got out big. your way. It's why we in your way. Bigger than you, buddy. Listen, listen, listen. This, we're not going to go back and forth don't with worry. you. I know we're not going to go back and forth with you. I'm not going to do that. Because you have no right. I have no right. Yeah. Okay. This is when a good cop stops the other bad cop. You, just, from you providing, should just stop talking to him. I can talk as much as I want. Freedom of speech, but I guess you tyrants won't understand that, right? Mm. Yeah, you should actually start listening. And that's the scary part is that, you know, you, you, you request a supervisor, you know, hoping that someone can step in and, and you need know, to calm the situation, de-escalate. And you know, he just refused to call. And um, that's when fire rescue finally arrived. And he started pushing me away from my wife. He didn't want me to go to her side of the car. He physically pushed me away from the car and put me on the sidewalk. You know, they came, they did her vitals. They checked her, her, her blood pressure was what? It was about like what average of what, 120 over 80. I think when they checked it manually, it was about 190 over 110. And my face is all red and, and heart's racing. And they were like, you know, she's clear, but she needs to get to the emergency room. Like, 
logically, that's what needs to happen. I think even they were a little confused as to what's going on as well. They're like, you're right here. But yeah, they they were pretty, they were confused. They they had like a look on their face, like, why are we here? The emergency team is a couple you know, feet away. So when they cleared us, he said, you know, you can, you can either leave or wait for my supervisor here. You know, and I said, well, I'll, I'll go to the emergency room, take my wife, but I still want to speak with her supervisor. And he said, no, you, you have two options. You go to the emergency room or you stay here and wait for my, my supervisor. And I said, no, I still want to speak with your supervisor, but I'm leaving. I'm like, you know, at this point, you give me a ticket. You give me whatever you need to do, but I need to take her to the emergency room. Um, and that's when he let us go to the emergency room finally. Sir, have a step, a step over there to the side over there. Hey, how you doing, LT? All right. This young lady here, she says that she was involved, with, they were involved in an accident yesterday. And um, they come here today. And uh, she's saying that she's not feeling too good. You can check her vitals for me. Uh, this is her name. This is her, her, her uh, ID right here. Sir, stay, step on the sidewalk over there. Stay on the sidewalk. Stay on the curb. Stay on the curb, sir. Stay on the curb. Sir, stay on the curb, sir. Stay on the curb. Stay on the curb over there. Stay on the curb. Stay, stay on the curb. Stay on the curb. What's the reason? Because we're, we're treating your, your wife right now. We're treating your wife. Oh, it's good? Okay. All righty. All right. Yeah. Okay. They cleared your wife, okay? Your wife is cleared, okay? Check my blood pressure, but I know that she's like, I don't Check. Get your phone out. Your wife is cleared. She's okay. All right? So there's no need to blow your horn at us and get and start going off on me and my, my partner. You understand? So you don't that do you that. That's not the way you do things. You, you, put me you told us that she was having an emergency. You, me over? you you I blew my horn No, we, in the way listen, 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 listen. Are you going to are you going to let me speak? I don't speak? need to. You okay, well, all right. I need a ticket if you like. I need to go to the emergency room right now. Okay, you've been cleared by fire rescue. If you would like to still go in there, you can. But okay. listen, do not don't your listen, listen, you listen, 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 listen. Do not, listen. do not do that. Don't do that. All right. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't don't do that. Don't do that. All right. Do not. Please don't do that. Like I said. Call your supervisor. Take your stuff. Go to the fire. Go over there. I'll be working this right here. This is my off-duty job right here. I'm here. I'm here till 10 o'clock tonight. I'm, I need to speak All right. If you want to see him right now, if you want to wait, I'll get him for you. I'll wait over there. You're going to wait over there now? Correct. Okay. All right. All right. And, what's, and what is your name? Kevin and CISO. Let me see your driving license so I can let no. them know who's coming. Let me see your driving license, him. sir. I'll give it to him when he gets here. Okay. Like I said. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me your name. Tell me your name again. Kevin and CISO. All right, Kevin and CISO. Go ahead. I miss you. Go ahead. All right, we get them. Oh. Yeah, this guy, this guy right here, he was, he was, he was being very aggressive. We was, he pulled up because they dispatched him reference right the oh, same, the same guy I was telling you about, the guy that walked away. Was, that's that's why he was dispatched over okay. here. And while he was pulled up, he had just pulled up next to me, and this guy, he goes off on my partner here, and then he goes off on me, uh, uh, using vanity and stuff. And I'm like, what's what's going on? He said, uh, get the f out the way and this and that. And I'm like. So we pulled up, I pulled over, find out what's the deal. He said that his wife is having some emergency. Fire, that's why I, con I stopped him right here, contact fire rescue. And of course, she's walking in right now. She was clear, and now she's still, she's walking in. He just wanted to be, right, right. he wanted to call something no, here. No, the reason why I came, because the uh, CEO of the building called yeah. because they were kind of concerned, you know, they saw two police car, and then, you know, they yeah. just want to know everything was okay. Yeah, yeah, he, okay. yeah, yeah. No that, problem. Yeah, the guy, I think the guy had already had uh, mm -hmm. a... Yeah, we, we, Responded because of the yeah. guy that walked out of um, the ER. They, they ended up calling after you left, but they said that he wasn't in Baker or anything. He just pulled the IV line and left. Okay. I guess medical advice. It, it, it 
wasn't a big deal. We're just going to write an FYI report that you oh, have okay. against oh. medical advice. And that's yeah, it. yeah. Uh, yeah. No, there's a female officer inside this shoe. Oh, okay. She's, she's also... Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. No problem. Okay. So, yeah, they sold, you know, through the video. They didn't want to notify that everything was okay. Yeah, everything is okay. All right. He was just being very uh, aggressive yeah, no towards us. Okay. So, uh, we, we're good. All right. Thanks, brother. All the situation is taken care of already. Too. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. No problem. Thanks, Nino. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, go over here and then uh, sit out here and see what this guy's deal is gonna be. Because I'll be out here till 10 o'clock. If I if I would have heard it, heard you being dispatched, I would have 07. Yeah, but uh, it's normally quiet around here. It's normally no problem at all. But I don't know what this guy's deal is. So. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at the river mirror. And I see him. Uh, going off on you, and I'm like, what the? I was like, is it? Is it? They, I thought they was actually arguing with each other in the car. That's what I thought. I thought he was arguing with his wife, and the way he was going off. And then I look and I see him pointing at you and, and going off on you, and I'm like, what is? This? So that's why. Hey, do you? Okay, we got your wife help. She was cleared or whatever, but you don't have to act like that, you know. But anyway, we good, you know. Uh, I'll be here on Thursdays. They said, uh, I guess they say that. Um, uh, we'll probably get this back on in October. This is actually the last couple oh, of days yeah? for this month. Yeah, because of the budget, the budget uh, problems with it. All right, brother. All right, I'll see you later. Yeah. Was there any paperwork uh, about this incident? Was there any police reports written up that you know about anything? He just he just detained you and then let you guys go after wasting your time and. Yeah, was that? Yeah. We never got a ticket. We never got any paperwork. Nothing ever came from his side. Not that we're aware of, you know, I'm not sure if anything was filed on his end or reported, but we never got anything from him. Uh, how soon uh, after the incident did you did you file a, a uh, complaint against this officer? Um, and if you did, what was the outcome of this complaint? Yeah, uh, we, the next day is when I called Internal Affairs for Miami-Dade Police Department, and they took an uh, initial statement over the phone. They said that they were, they'll be investigating, you know, but they're, uh, you know, a little busy because they have a lot of cases. I don't think anything's been done or updated on their end. So you said every couple of weeks. How long has it been since you filed this uh, complaint? It was within the same week that the incident happened. So to this point, we're still waiting for a response. Natasha, what what do you what do you think? You know, I I think this definitely shows mistakes can happen. Someone can misinterpret a situation, but the moment that you determine that this does not qualify for an appropriate, you know, detention for you to be detaining them, and I mean, you're encroaching on their their rights, and that is where the issue starts. So a, a horn is the purpose of having a horn on your car is to do exactly what they did. They alerted the person that. Someone is there and there's nothing, there's nothing anywhere with regard to special privileges that police officers are afforded. There's nothing um, inherently wrong with them doing what they did with regard to honking their horn to notify him. And even in this situation, if they honked it aggressively and like literally put their elbow to the horn, that still wouldn't be inappropriate. Um, and it wouldn't justify them being detained for that amount of time, especially once the circumstances were communicated to the officer. So I I just want to make that statement to the both of you because you absolutely did nothing wrong. You didn't owe anybody any duty um, to refrain from honking your horn or just sit there and be patient just because of the uniform that someone wears. That is, that's, that's, not, don't even carry that with you. Hindsight is always twenty twenty, And in most situations you can, especially when you're, you know, the type of person that does try to do some self-reflection and see, okay, what could I have done differently? I know I do that too. Even when I know that I was not quote wrong in a situation, it's like, oh, well, could I have handled it better? Is there something I could have done? But especially in this situation, they did not do anything wrong. And I don't think that it's even appropriate for anyone to say like, oh, well, if you didn't honk the horn, then this wouldn't have happened. Who's to say? I mean, would it have been different if he got out of the car, walked up to the officer, knocked on the window and said, excuse me, we're trying to get into the hospital. Can you guys move? Then it's like, oh, he shouldn't have got out of his car. So, you know, there's really no other way to look at this other than the officers violated their human rights and 
also violated just human decency because once they learn that, you know, she's seeking medical attention, they're concerned about their, at the time, baby, and no one cared about them. And this is a direct violation of the a police officer's duty to protect and serve. Like, who are you protecting in this situation? No one. Who should you have been protecting in this situation? The three, you know, lives that you were aware of there that needed to seek medical attention. Is he legally allowed to open his car door, unbuckle his seatbelt, and and remove him from the vehicle, essentially? There are, it's levels, you know, to um, a traffic stop. And yes, an officer has the right to stop a vehicle. You know, if they're on duty, if they're in their jurisdiction, they absolutely have that right. But there has to be something that has been violated. So either you violated a traffic rule or an ordinance. They gave them the right to be able to conduct the traffic stop. Or, you know, as we know, it could be you fit the description of something or your tag is like whatever. There has to be some basis that gives them first the the right to be able to stop the car. Pulling him out of the car was not appropriate because there was no legitimate reason to. If it's a valid traffic stop, then yes, you do have to provide your identification. And sometimes that's the risk that you take. Just like if you get pulled over for a DUI, if you refuse to blow or do the the field sobriety test, but you know that you are not um, drunk and you know that you didn't violate any traffic rules to give them the right to pull you over, then that case will be determined in your favor. But if you don't blow, but they had a legitimate reason to pull you over, then you could still have violated some rules because you didn't provide them the um, documentation that, they're, that you're required to provide to them and they're it, you know, it's valid for them to request that. But in this case, what was the legitimate basis for pulling them over? And we all know what it is. It really was ego, because if it wasn't ego, there has to be a moment in time where you kind of just like snap out of it. And you're like, what am I doing? Like, let me just let this go. But sometimes people just get so married to their initial decision to do something that they can't let it go. And it just that visually what it seems here without talking to Officer Daniel, we don't really know what his real motivation was. It's all speculative, but I think that it all stems from him being mad about whatever. Maybe it was a conversation he was having with the other officer, maybe a thousand other things. But the fact of the matter is, is that, I mean, sometimes I don't want to do my job and I still have to do it. I have my own ethical and professional requirements and I can't violate those for whatever reason. I can't. So that's what it boils down to. And then beyond that, it comes down to is this an isolated incident with just the officer or is this uh, um, an issue that is bigger than just this one officer because the other officers came and they weren't shocked or what are you doing or then pull him to the side and talk to him. So this seems to be, you know, an issue within the department. This just isn't OK. I mean, everyone here is obviously thankful that it didn't escalate and it wasn't worse, but you shouldn't have to suffer extreme loss or extreme damages for you to be, you know, remedied for wrongs. This is a constitutional violation and it shouldn't always require severe injury or death for people to be held accountable because a lot of times, And I know this is one of the major motivations of my clients for putting in the work. And even though they're dealing with the trauma that is still, you know, affecting them and the fears that are still flowing from that incident today, they want to make sure that they do whatever they can to make sure that or try to help make sure that this doesn't happen to someone else. And if it is a situation where this person, um, this officer or other people involved aren't motivated by the proper um, things to do their job and they're not truly there to uphold, you know, their duty to protect and serve, then this should come to the forefront to hopefully prevent it from happening again and happening in a way where it does result in additional damage and severe. I mean, we see it. I don't have to say anything else. We see how these types of things can go and just happy that, you know, they are able to be here to tell the story in the way that they are, but they're also very strong. So I know it can come off sometimes as like, oh, it's not that bad, but you you just don't know what people are dealing with internally. Throughout the course of my investigation, I made multiple diligent efforts to obtain the body cam footage that was just presented to you. However, each attempt was met with refusal from the Internal Affairs Unit of the Miami-Dade Police Department, citing the ongoing nature of the case as the reason for denial. 
It was not until precisely one year and three months later, on November 9th, 2023, that the Miami-Dade Police Department finally concluded their investigation and provided Kevin and CISO with the long-awaited body cam footage. Despite the completion of their internal affairs investigation, the outcome regarding any potential disciplinary actions against Officer Aziz Daniels for his reckless conduct during the incident remains undisclosed. Because of this incident, what is your view on police? Has it changed since? Yeah, what are your thoughts on that? My views have definitely changed. I will say, like, my, I've had a lot of family members on law enforcement for a lot of years. I grew up around them. Like, you know, my mom, my grandmother, they've been, they retired from corrections. So I never had an issue. There's never been a problem. I know the law. I know to respect, you know, an officer of the law, especially. And now it's like you kind of get some tension where, if I see them on in public or, you know, you kind of just tense up a little bit. You, you, you don't have to be doing anything wrong. And I think they say, you know, if you're driving a car, it's behind you. You can be doing absolutely everything legal, but you still get that fear. And it's like, I feel like that every time. And it's just like, you don't know what's going to happen, what's going to come out of this incident. And it's like, we made sure that, you know, our dash cam now, you know, it's always on making sure that, you know, we do say the right thing. And it's like, you shouldn't feel that way. Because if somebody's, you know, impinging on your rights or, you know, against the law, then you should feel the need to act out or not act out, but speak out. And now you feel like, you know, you're, you're, I'm just, for me, I'm just trying to avoid everything at all costs. And it's it's a shame that you have to feel that way. Like you, there's not 100% trust anymore in what's going to happen. Since I was a little kid, my first interaction with a police officer was amazing. You know, I fell off my bike. They came, picked me up. Since that day, I was like, oh my God, like police just yeah. the greatest. It was it was always like a thing. And I would always see the videos online. And now after this event, it's like, I'm just always nervous, you know, scared when I'm in public and I see an officer, uh, when I'm at work and we, you know, work with, you know, police officers for events, it's just, it's uneasy. It's like, now I have to second guess everything. I find myself just more closed off and, you know, worried about what might happen to the point where we're afraid to call for help. And the worry is about they're going to recognize us as well. That's another thing. The car in our faces, so it doesn't... You think twice about doing things. Yeah, you, you can't call for help for the people that you think that should help you. 